Well, everyone, it is that time again. We are talking about main battle tanks and my favourite main battle tank in the world, the Challenger 2 main battle tank. Now, this is pretty interesting news for me because, you know, the tank has for some time required heavy upgrades, many of which I don't think we're ever going to see happen until they develop a naturally entirely new main battle tank. The obvious ones being, of course, the rifled gun to smoothbore gun, the power pack, and some other minor modifications that really do need to be done to ensure that it keeps up with modern main battle tank technology. Of course, Challenger 2 has been around for quite some time, and it's still serving very well as a main battle tank for the United Kingdom. However, a lot of you have been asking me to review the new upgrades that have just been passed down from BAE. Today, folks, we are going to talk about the Challenger 2 Black Knight. No, not this knight. I'm invincible! You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs! As much as I wish I was talking about that knight, because I absolutely love that movie, no, we are talking about BAE's new rendition of a package that they're placing onto the Challenger 2 main battle tank to bring it in line with some of the more modern day systems that are being placed on tanks nowadays. Now, I'm really going to touch base on the majority of the systems first and then put a bit of my opinion on it. I know a number of you have been begging me to talk about this system and it's really difficult for me to talk about because I haven't been around the Challenger 2 for quite some time. I'm not too sure what the opinion is of it of nowadays modern soldiers uh, within the British Army. I can almost guarantee that 90% of British soldiers still have a huge respect for this tank. I know for a fact I do. It is a fantastic piece of equipment. It is very formidable in the tanking world. Uh, but, you know, however, that is not saying it's without its flaws. It definitely has room for improvement, and that's what we're going to discuss today. So, as of September 2018, if you're watching this in the future, BAE Systems announced that the Black Knight Challenger 2 Life Extension Project Technology Demonstrator to be released to the public for viewing. Now, really, to me, it just looks like it's been covered in fancy gizmos, but there's a lot more to it. The LEP, or Life Extension Program, was intended to address the mission system obsolescence and to ensure the vehicle remains supportable until 2035. So any of you who for some reason keep thinking we're going to get a new Challenger tank, it's not going to happen. I want it to, I want them to develop a new main battle tank. You know, a lot of people have been arguing about the smoothbore rifle situation. We could talk about that all day and that's not what this video is going to address. But it's not going to happen, folks. This tank is here to stay. The British Army and the UK government want to invest every penny that they can into an existing platform, and that's the way it's just going to be, so we have to accept it. So hopefully we're going to see even more improvements overall than just the Black Knight program, but it's a good start. So to explain this vehicle program a little bit more in depth and the kind of reasons as to why it's happening, I'm actually going to let someone from the sales division of VAE Systems discuss it a little bit because they just have a better explanation of exactly what's going on than I do. And then we'll have a little chat about the comments afterwards. So, so the uh, Challenger 2 came into service in the UK in 1998. Um, we're now at the stage where the customer, the UK MOD, wants to extend the life uh, from 2025 out to 2035 and beyond. So that's really around removal of obsolescence. A lot of the equipment that's fitted to the, uh, to the tank has, has become obsolete. And um, what we want to do is, is bring in the equipment that's fit for the future. As part of that, we're very much uh, looking at um, bringing in new, new equipment, new thermal imaging systems from our partners. So, we, so the Challenger 2 solution that we have for Life Extension Program is a teaming, Team Challenger 2 made up of ourselves, BA Systems, General Dynamics UK, uh, General Dynamics from Canada, Leonardo, Safran from France, uh, and also Kinetic from the UK. Uh, it's all about giving that tank the capability to uh, not only to last until 2035 and beyond, but very much taking it uh, further, giving it operational capability throughout the uh, throughout the night, so 24-hour hunter-killer capability. So that's a big step change for the Challenger 2 tank. There are a number of other optional enhancements that we've introduced as well, such as hard kill dust that is shown on the uh, demonstrator vehicle outside. And, and at Challenger 2, uh, 1200 horsepower, Rolls Royce Perkins engine. Indeed. Um, most of its contemporaries have 1500 horsepower these days. Yes. Is there any option? Have you looked at an engine swap? There certainly are options. That wouldn't be part of the life extension program. Uh, the UK Ministry of Defence have other programmes. So, for example, they have a programme called HAPE, which is Heavy Armour Automotive Improvement Programme. 
Um, that's looking at what the options are. So that is something very much in our mind about switching engines, up racing engines. Uh, those discussions are ongoing as part of the HIP program. And another thing that's often discussed when Challenger 2 is mentioned is, is rifled main gun. Yes. There are options out there for smoothbore. Yes. Not everybody is, is familiar with the differences between rifled and smoothbore. Yes. Uh, for those, could you go through and, and just tell us a little bit about the two? Sure, yeah. Um, in very simple terms, as, as the term suggests, a rifled barrel. As you, maybe you see on the start of a James Bond movie, we, which, which has turns around the barrel, which so essentially the bullet, the projectile, as it travels down the barrel, uh, spins very rapidly, and it's that spin that gives the stability for the projectile through uh, once it leaves the barrel and goes to the target. Uh, smoothbore ammunition, once again, as it suggests, it doesn't have the rifling, um, so what it relies on is once the uh, projectile has left the, ba the barrel, is that it has uh, fins to give it stability. So it's different, different approaches. Um, they have different uh, pros and cons, different uh, advantages, disadvantages, uh, and it's very much up to the, the customer's choice to what, to what he would like. And, and, and finally, just returning to the Challenger 2 Life Extension Programme, is there any update on where that is and, and when any decisions might be announced that you can discuss? Yeah, well, we're at the stage at the moment where the, the assessment phase, we're well through the current assessment phase, that comes to an end at the end of this year. Uh, the customer is looking at a, a number of capability enhancements that he is considering uh, introducing. Um, those discussions are going on at the moment, very much part of the customer's activity, not part of ours. Um, so there is a potential that the, the assessment phase could be extended or we may go straight into a demonstration and manufacture phase at the end of the assessment phase following the end of this year. So some interesting points made there. I actually quite enjoyed the interview. We're kind of challenging them, pun the pun, on the more serious needs of this tank and requirements that uh, you know a lot of people have been asking about, you know, what's going on with the tank engine? What's going on with the main gun? Are we going to upgrade the turret to allow for a smoothbore? What's all you know, the major changes we're looking for? Now, for major changes electronically and active defense position side of things, it's definitely a, a major upgrade for this tank. We have seen programs placed onto this vehicle before, um, including the common weapon system package uh, and, you know, bar armor, all that good stuff, barracuda, um, camouflage, heat camouflage system placed all over the vehicle. Very, very high-end stuff, um, not actually applied to nearly all of the main battle tanks of the British Army. We do have the test and development vehicle that is located in Bovington. Um, that is known as Megatron that has a ton of extra equipment placed on it, and, but it is a development program The exact same thing really applies with this Black Knight program. It's it's purely a test rig It's a concept vehicle that uh, I'm sure they're going to eventually Participate in bringing into the British Army full-time. We will see of course when any new technology comes out the robot military voice channels are all over this tank as part of the BAE Systems led bid to upgrade the Challenger 2 tank and would for the first time bring independent night vision for both the gunner and the commander. And power has been showcased at the Defence Vehicles Dynamics event in Millbrook, amongst them a prototype for updating the British Army's main battle tank. Challenger 2 was designed and manufactured documentation to support the Modi's preliminary design review and Black Knight has been developed to both inform the development of our Challenger 2 MK2 solution and to demonstrate the maturity of our design to the British Army as part of Team Challenger 2's bid to upgrade the Army's main battle tank. You know, honestly, those videos are hilarious. Most of the information they're getting obviously cut and paste. I do obviously use sources to pull my own information about this vehicle, considering it is so brand new, it's very hard to find information. Uh, but I might as well just review this toy tank of the Black Knight uh, upgrade package than actually of the vehicle itself. When you see videos like that, and the amount of, you know, people that are buying into what they're saying, it's like, guys, come on, like, we need actual facts about this tank. Now, BA Systems has really taken a step forward when it comes to active protection, they really have. They're trying to get in line with obviously the T14 Armada side of things. The T14 is definitely up there when it comes to active protection systems. We're starting to see countries with main battle tank uh, warfare doctrine 
looking into how can we defend against anti-tank weapon systems. We know anti-tank missiles are the highest threat other than IEDs, heavy tank, uh, you know, landmines to tanks nowadays. We really have the standoff capability from aircraft, helicopters and stuff to be able to prevent tank on tank engagement and let's hope it never happens. But tanks still have the threat of open infantry being able to engage them with anti-tank weapon systems and that's really the package overall focus for this tank. So let's talk about some of the features of this tank then. So it is going to be getting a new modern electronic and video architecture system which is the backbone of this vehicle. It will enable the commander to transfer tasks to other crew members such as control and viewing of additional sensors and systems. The crew menus within the displays will be more intuitive and have much more functionality similar to that of the Ajax which I've also done a video on if you want to go check that out which is the replacement to the CVRT vehicle or the reconnaissance vehicle in the future. Making it a lot more easy for the commander to move between the Challenger 2 and Ajax vice versa if there needs to be within regimental changes which I know really isn't the juicy nitty gritty stuff that's really cool and interesting but it is quite important. Cross training of systems is really important. I must admit when I was in the Warrior transitioning uh, to working on CVRT working on the same battle group management system is really important and having the ability to change you know from the Challenger 2 to the Ajax or maybe even in the future the Warrior uh, platform as a vehicle commander you may actually be able to cross uh, train very very easily and that's for the British Army very very effective because it reduced training costs. Now the new control panels have some of the latest hand controllers intelligent flat panel displays and given an instant feel more uh, modern vibe to the vehicle with other major improvements that are really going to be based upon the defense of the system itself and the tank uh, from any kind of anti-tank weapon system. Uh, they are going to improve the survivability measures with a better hit probability, faster targeting and vastly improved sighting systems. Some of the sighting systems that they're placing on the Challenger 2 now are to in allow it to be more hunter killer capable. The Challenger 2 has always been very good at doing so with its independent um, commander's viewer however um, it hasn't been too great at night they have had some concerns about its clarity and visibility during um you know rough conditions too so they're trying to increase the i guess um the you know the visual uh, that you're getting through the sight of that system which is imperative when you're engaging targets up to two to three kilometers away they're going to try using an open architecture approach with this package which means that the future upgrades that will come to the vehicle will be incorporated a lot more easily cross compatibility between parts components and other systems is key here and that's what they're trying to aim for Team Challenger 2 is trying to ensure that the tank is ready to receive that further capability enhancement such as the active protection systems and future electronic countermeasures, training systems and enhanced decision support systems to allow the British Army to really take this stuff on and off the vehicle as needed. There's absolutely no point in buying all this high-tech equipment when there is real no threat to vehicles out on say the training areas in Suffield that you're seeing the beautiful footage of now. Um, because this is expensive equipment and trust me if soldiers get expensive equipment most of the time we just break it. It's hard enough just using the uh, TES equipment or the laser equipment that we use for I guess all round army laser tag. We break it all the time it's just it's electronics. Soldiers don't get along well with electronics. So what they're trying to do is make sure that this stuff, this fancy equipment they're going to stick all over this tank is modular. It can be removed very quickly and placed back on very quickly, almost like an urgent operational requirement, which is normally something that is given to a battle tank, infantry soldier, whatever it may be, as a urgent requirement because they're about to deploy. Putting, you know, this high-tech equipment all over these tanks when just doing some live fire training ranges and stuff, it's just going to get busted. It'd be a huge waste of money. So they're trying to make it so that it can be just taken off very, very quickly. Um, you know, Active Protection Systems is a video that I'm going to be doing very heavily in the future. It's something that is evolving more and more and more. Very impressive stuff. I'll admit I'm a little skeptical of the technology right now purely for the fact that I think we haven't quite tested it enough to allow it to be capable for defense against real world situations. Now I'm not a scientist, I'm not a defense analyst, a research analyst, I don't know enough about the technology to really say if it's fully capable of what it needs to do. However, anything that will allow this tank to be protected if it goes into future deployments for the British Armed Forces, I am all for. Whether it works 20% of the time, 5% of the time, 90% of the time, anything that will protect those crew members from any kind of anti-tank weapon system that could come towards it, I'm all for and very happy that this, you know, this package is coming uh, towards this vehicle. However, this is what brings me on to the main point of this video today. 
I don't think we're quite in the need for this stuff just yet. I think we need to focus on the core of the tank before we work us on the niceties, the things that, you know, we should put on there if it goes into an operational deployment. We're still working with a tank that, for me, for the most part, has a power plant that should not be at rated what it is right now. 1200 horsepower is not enough to allow this vehicle to do what it needs to do with all the new upgrade packages coming out for it. The up armor package, the, you know, the, the new Barracuda armor packages, bar armor, you put all these, you know, other weapon systems on there, like the active protection system and stuff. You're adding to the weight more and more and more and I know this vehicle is very capable at what it can do with the current power pack it has but it could do with that reinforcement upgrade first now there is an upgrade package coming hopefully for the challenge 2 that we're going to see this power plant come out for the tank and that is really good news of course the next big argument between everyone about this tank is that gorgeous rifled gun Yes, we know there's a lot of pros and cons between the rifled and smoothbore, but we are at the point, in my own personal opinion, to have a smoothbore gun placed on this vehicle. There are some limitations for the rifled gun on the Charger 2. I am not saying this gun cannot do what it needs to do and engage tanks as needs be, but I think in terms of cross compatibility between other militaries around the world, we really need to get with the time and the ages and transfer over to a smoothbore gun with a new turret that allows for the you know ammunition to be stored because we do have the problem with the kind of ammunition we're using with the rifle gun uh, to cross compatibility to uh, smoothbore ammunition. So let's just talk about some of the intricacies that this package is going to bring as well then because we don't want to sidetrack too much away from uh, the key package that we're talking about today, the Black Knight program. Now on a closer look, the system focuses on the APS but of course the commander's panoramic sight. The active protection system has visible sensors all over the front of the turret as well as two launches to engage incoming projectiles to the vehicle, one mounted each side of the turret. But it's unknown whether or not this really will be a soft or hard kill version of the APS. The focus for us has, has been around the, the sensor system. So what we've got on Challenger 2 Mark II behind us is a new commander's panoramic sight which is now fully 24 hours, so it's got a thermal channel and an optical channel, so that gives us a full 24 hour hunter capability. Uh, secondly, we've uh, put onto the vehicle a driver's night vision system. Uh, we've also uh, put onto the platform, as you can see on the outside there, some laser warning receivers to help detect threats and the active protection system you can see on the vehicle is the Iron Fist. So that is able to detect incoming missiles and destroy those missiles before they hit the target. There are some sensors on each of the corner of the, the turret, front and rear, and the two effectors are on the top, so they look like those, those black mortar tubes. They fire uh, an explosive charge to stop these incoming missiles. And when you get inside the platform, we're putting in a, we've got in there a brand new commander's crew station with a flat screen displays on which all the sensors and the battle management can be seen and integrated uh, to make the commander's life much better. And overall, that therefore significantly improves the fightability of Challenger 2. So we think it's turning a great tank into an even better tank. I, um, myself, was a tank soldier. We've got a lot of people in, in the business who were on tanks, and as I say, we designed it so we know exactly what needs to be done to give the British Army exactly what they need. So yeah, we'll win this thing. So, there you have it folks, the primary focus being on the active protection system, whether it be laser warning systems, active protection from projectiles coming towards the vehicle, or, you know, uh, just the old school smoke screen, which I'm sure they're going to place back onto there too. I've always said that more smoke discharges need to be placed on vehicles other than the standard setup of the 5 cluster on the front. And I think that's what they're probably going to maybe even additionally upgrade to uh, the Black Knight program. I think one of the other big positives for me in this upgrade is the ability for the commander to get new systems inside his vehicle, touchscreen displays, battle management systems, and the capability to cross-reference um, information to the rest of the crew or other crews or other vehicles in the battle group. Very, very important. As I've said before, battle management systems are really, really important when it comes to situational awareness, being able to know where the enemy is, where your friendlies are, and the assets you have available in the terrain. You know, the GPSs I was given in the British Army were very primitive, and the th kind of things they're bringing out now are incredible. I mean, it's it's almost like Google Maps on training areas or operational deployments now. We're looking at battle management screens. It's insane. Very, very impressive stuff. So I think commanders are really going to enjoy having that capability when it comes out. 
Folks, that is it for today. There's really not much more to talk about this package. I've pretty much gone over all the things that need to be required uh, to be talked about it because I don't have enough information. There's not enough out there to really get a definitive, you know, solid opinion on this thing because I, this is not enough. It's too brand new. I must admit, I, I appreciate the gentleman who's developing this system from BA saying, you know, he was a tanker um, and he's, I mean, once you're a tanker, you're always a tanker in his eyes, I'm sure. And uh, he works with a lot of people who are tankers. So the people who are designing this stuff aren't just some, you know, uh, random Joe Blow off the street. These guys know the tank, they know it very well. I just hope they're not being influenced uh, by money as to how this vehicle is being showcased as this shining jewel with this new package. I think it's a really positive thing, but I think for me, the basis that I take from this package an upgrade system is we need to focus on the core of the tank, i.e. the gun itself, the stowage of the ammunition, and for me, primarily, being that I was a tank mechanic, the power plant, that beautiful 1200 horsepower engine um, being pushed up to that 1500 or even 2000 horsepower range would be a huge, huge benefit for this vehicle, I would guarantee you of that. Everyone, if you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate you leaving a comment. I'd love to hear your own opinion on this system and the upgrade package. If you want to support my channel, I would really appreciate if you go check out my Patreon page. It is in the description box below. Go check it out if you want to uh, donate or support to my channel. It really would mean a lot, being that YouTube doesn't like me very much lately. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos from my channel, hit that little bell button right beside the subscribe button. You can be given a little bit of an update of what's coming out from my channel straight away. Uh, and if you want to come chat with me, hang out with me, play video games, whatever it is, come hang out on the Discord channel. Again, all the links are in the description box below. And uh, I hope to see you next time. All the best. Bye-bye.